Good morning. So I'm going to make bread today. Again. I find I'm making it like in the winter time a little bit more often. It's, um, I think about every other day. And even though that's providing me with two loaves of bread, they go fast. Probably not so fast, you know, in the summer when it's warmer outside and people just don't really eat much bread, at least not around here. But anyway, so, let me move my coffee out of the way. I about an hour ago I turned my oven on 170 and now I need to I'm trying to gently move you around sorry about that um, now I need to turn the oven off and open that door so that while I'm mixing up the bread dough um, the oven will kind of cool down to just a warm temperature and not something that's too hot and will actually end up cooking the dough before it's ready. <clears throat> and with the oven door open um, on a cold day like today, that feels pretty good. All right, so for the ingredients, I need uh, just some white sugar, some bread flour. You can actually do this exact same recipe with all purpose flour. You cannot use this recipe with self-rising flour, but an all-purpose flour or bread flour are perfect. Okay, so we need those two things. Um, I, my salt shaker is getting a little bit low. So I'm just gonna use my plain old Kroger brand iodized salt. Nothing in this video is sponsored. Okay, everything you see here I have purchased. Alrighty, so I need a measuring cup. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use my big four cup. That's, that's what I do. And I use my Keurig to get the warm water. <clears throat> so the basic lesson for today is if I were going to dissolve my yeast in the water, what I would need to do to kind of help it along is make sure that it's, the water is not hotter than 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and I would need to put some sugar in the water to kind of help feed the um, active dry yeast. Um, if I'm going to uh, add the water to the sugar, salt, and flour, and butter um, in my bowl, then the water can be a little bit warmer because the, the flour and the sugar and the salt will help sort of bring that temperature down a little bit. And that's the way I prefer to do this. So my recipe for two loaves of basic white bread is on the back of the gold medal um, bag of bread flour. The only change is <coughs> I'm not going to be using butter. I'm going to be using Earth Balance, which is a vegan butter substitute. Um, it is exactly the same amount. On here it will tell you um, on this side that you need two tablespoons of shortening and on this side it says two tablespoons of butter or margarine. I just go ahead and use four tablespoons of my um, vegan Earth Balance. So, the first thing I'm going to do the, the recipe also says that you need two and a quarter cups of very warm water. And really it's almost hot water at 120 to 130 degrees. A really good way to figure out the temperature of your water is to remember that your body temperature is 198, or 198, 
98.7, 98.6, you know, somewhere in that range. If when you touch the water, it feels lukewarm, it's just going to be slightly above. It's like 99 to 100 degrees. If it feels warm, then it's probably 110. If there's like, ooh, that's almost a little bit too warm, but not scalding hot, it could be in the right range between 120 and 130, which is what it tells you on the gold metal white bread recipe. The water that comes out of my Keurig is very warm. Um, and the largest cup size that I get, I'll just carry you over there to show you. So right here is the measurement, this very large cup. That's what I use and it gives me one and a quarter cups of water. Now what I plan to do with this is dissolve my four tablespoons of Earth Balance Vegan Butter Substitute in one, two, three, four. The tip of a table knife, if you can't read the measurements on here, the very tip of your table knife is exactly a tablespoon. So you can measure that by yourself if you can't read it on the little wrapper. Okay, and then I'm gonna just cut this into pieces and put it in the water to kind of help melt it. I do want this melted. It's so much easier to mix up the bread or the dough, I guess I should say. All right. And I know I'm going to need a bit more of this. Um, I'm not quite done with the water portion. But while that butter, butter is melting, I'm going to go ahead and put about three cups of flour in my bowl. don't have to measure this first little bit with precision and accuracy. Um, I'm not going to be too sloppy about it, but I kind of know, you know, that that's about two and a half and I have just some little poofs left in the bottom of the bag. So I've got slightly under three cups in that bowl right now. I go through flour so quickly that I don't really feel the need to transfer my flowers to a canister because it just doesn't live in my house very long. Okay, so that's yeah, a little bit more. Okay, that's about three and a half right there. And of course, I'm not discouraging you from measuring. I'm just saying I kind of don't have to do that. All right, now my butter is melting pretty well here. And now I need to measure my... So for the gold medal white bread recipe, you need one tablespoon of salt. If you want to cut back on the salt, you certainly can. Um, it does add texture and flavor. So if you want to try to do the authentic gold metal white bread recipe, then you would need to use the full tablespoon. But if you do cut it back, it's not going to really do much to the integrity of this recipe. 
All right, we also need two tablespoons of sugar. And this just sort of helps make this bread a little bit more palatable. Not that it isn't a good bread recipe, it's just that sugar does add that little burst of flavor. And this is a new yeast. I just got the, oh no, I used it yesterday. Okay, so I'm using the Red Star Active Dry Yeast because my store did not have Fleischmann's. Um, I had not used it before and I found with my first two loaves of bread out of this, it was great. It works just, just great. So if Fleischmann's isn't available, I will be using Red Star. Okay, so two packages of active dry yeast. Now, w one package of yeast has two, no, that doesn't seem right. Now I'm, I'm questioning myself because I think it's one and a quarter teaspoon of yeast. I'm going to go, I'm definitely going to go Google this. Hold on just a moment. Okay. So it is, it's two, one packet of yeast is two and a quarter teaspoons. My teaspoon measure is red. So that's two right there. And the quarter is missing, I think. Yeah, so I have to use this purple set, which right here I have. Okay, and then I'm just going to give it a little extra bump. And I mean, that was truly less than a pinch. All right, now I'm going to take my wire whisk, and I'm just going to kind of blend the flour, the sugar, the salt, and the yeast. And you will notice with the addition of the yeast that you have an interesting texture. Okay. So I know I need a little bit more water. Um, the addition of the melted butter caused the level of water to rise by a quarter of a cup. But I kind of know how much I need. So let me check the temperature on this. Okay, it's not quite warm enough. I'm gonna add the smallest addition per my Keurig. Okay, that's absolutely perfect. Now I want to check the temperature again. And yes, it has that little bite. But I want to make sure that I'm kind of going around the edges of my bowl. So I'm going to pull. And then just pour this around the outside edge. And then as quickly as possible, start stirring. I don't want it to sit in one spot too long. This portion of the steps in the recipe 
what you'll have is sort of just a sloppy dough. It, it's it's like a, a recipe for cookie dough that's too wet. You just want to make sure that every bit of the water, the butter, and the dry ingredients are very well incorporated and you cannot over stir it at this point. Okay, now what I was um, talking about earlier uh, with the oven, um, when I had it, I had it preheat to 170 degrees Fahrenheit and then after it had been preheated and hot for a while, I turned it off and opened the door and I just a few moments ago, I closed the door. So some of that heat has transferred into my kitchen and some has remained in the oven. I just don't want it to be so hot in the oven that it causes any cooking at all in this dough while it's rising. Um, and that is basically, you know, the heat coming from a hair dryer is too hot. So anything kind of below that temperature would be good. A lot of people use the top of their refrigerator. You know, they're just, they know where the warm spot in their house is. Um, you want to make sure that it's clean. You don't want, you know, cat or dog hair. Um, people coming and going if it's next to a door. Um, anything like that can disturb the rising process. But somewhere kind of, you know, maybe under a, a light bulb that doesn't get too hot. And I mean, not like this, but, you know. You just kind of have to decide where it won't cook, but where it will be warm enough for it to rise. Now I'm kind of standing here watching for um, bubbling, and I see a little bit of bubbling. And basically that means that the yeast is blooming or eating, as I used to say when I was in the sixth grade in baking. I can see some forming. I don't think you can see it on camera. Basically that means that all is well you have done your job and now the yeast is doing its job. When you're making bread, if you are in a quiet place where you can really observe, you'll actually be able to see it rising where in its actual process. Um, it will release these gases and as it does, you'll be able to see it move. You'll think to yourself, huh, did I just see that or am I crazy? Nope, you're actually seeing that happen. Or the little bubbles, which I'm still watching for. There's a lot of warmth here. <clears throat> and I just sort of let it, it rest, rest and rise. There's some bubbles popping. This just gives the yeast an opportunity to do what it needs to do before I overwhelm it with a little bit more of our flour. This is a good time if you haven't already done this. Um, I like to prep the area where I am kneading with uh, just plain water. Um, I don't want to, to incorporate any type of chemical, cleaning chemicals of any kind into my bread. And while it is rare, sometimes someone else will clean off the kitchen countertop um, with you know, a kitchen cleaner, and I won't know it. Um, so I just go ahead and just take a wet cloth and wipe it down. Make sure my cloth is clean. And that will give a good surface uh, to work my dough without any chemicals.
using this paper towel to kind of dry it down. Okay, now it's time to add the rest of our flour. And I recommend that you just do it a little bit at a time. You will know when you get to the magic level. That was approximately one cup, slightly under one cup. Oops, and like I said, you can't overwork it. It's not a biscuit recipe and you're not going to hurt it, cause it to do anything you don't want it to do. So you can be as aggressive as you need to be. You can see it's still sticking to the bowl, so I know I need more flour. I'm going to add about a half, slightly over a half a cup there. And I'm sort of pulling the dough up and then pushing down on top of that flour. It's just I don't even really know how to describe. You just have to make sure that you're getting the flour into the dough. So, you know, you can dig in with your spoon, push some flour into the doughy, sticky part. Still very sticky. But it's not sticking to the bowl. So at this point, my preference is to go ahead. I know I'm going to need quite a bit of flour to work into this, this young dough. I want to pull it off of the spoon. So I'm going to flour the spoon and remove the dough. And I'm now finished with this spoon. Okay. So. Now I take it out of the bowl. And I remove just by pushing with my fingers the sticky parts that I don't want and I'm just going to dump those out because I'm not going to use this. This is this is what was in the bowl and there's pieces of dough that are just it's it feels like rough cornmeal and I won't be able to incorporate that into my dough but I need the bowl to be somewhat clean because this is what I use for uh, the first rise and I don't clean it out. I just spray it with my um, my cooking spray or, or put some melted butter around the bowl. It's a step that really you don't have to do. You do not have to clean that bowl out. Okay, now I just have this warm velvety dough that I'm going to very gently knead. And based on your physical ability you can be as aggressive in this stage as you want to be, or you can take it as easy as you need to. You know, if, if trying to do what I'm doing, this is the push, quarter turn, push, quarter turn, push, quarter turn, push, quarter turn, now you've gone all the way around, now you can flip your dough over, push, and just start that process all over again. Um, this is the best way to get your flour incorporated 
and your dough to that proper consistency for bread. But if your physical ability is limited and you're not able to do what I am now currently doing, you can do one of two things. If you have a, a big, heavy duty mixer, um, I have a KitchenAid that happens to have a dough hook. Um, you can use that at this stage. If you like the process of mixing your dough by hand, you don't have to let the mixer do that for you. You can then put this in your bowl, your, your um, heavy duty mixing bowl that came with the mixer, and use that dough hook to do this part for you. The other thing that you can do if you enjoy the sort of zen experience of kneading is just push. Just take your fingers and just kind of push. You can do this sitting down. It does not have to be done standing up. And then take a break. Rest your arms. Break for as long as you need to. Let's say it's a 15 minute break, fine. You might wanna cover your dough with a paper towel. But when you come back, just fold it in half and push the, where it meets, kinda of like a big, you know, McDonald's apple pie. <laughs> just just sort of push those edges and then just push and you're going to feel see how it's getting sticky just as if I were kneading I'm gonna put a little bit of flour on the sticky part I don't want it to stick to my countertop either not because it's it's a mess but because I don't want to lose that dough I want as much of my dough in that bread as I can possibly get I'm working hard for this and then just push if you get tired, stop, take a break. Cover it with a paper towel. When you come back, flip it over, push. You can use the palms of your hands. It really is um, mentally cathartic. Just gives you an opportunity to stop and think about things and breathe. We've all forgotten how to breathe. I have a, um, I have a, basically he's a guru, strange word to use, but it's the absolute truth, who is teaching me um, how to breathe. There are actually uh, phone apps out there for those that might want to try one. Anyway, as you can see, I'm twisting my hand, twisting. Okay, and then flip it over and just keep keep doing that. You can flip it this way. The main goal is to get an elastic dough. It should feel very firm, but not rock hard. If you're kneading it the, the way I am currently kneading right now, um, it generally can take up to 10 minutes to get the last two to two and a half cups of flour um, incorporated into your dough. So you, you kind of can look at your, you know, at your clock. And that's 10 minutes for yourself, for your mind. Listen to some spa music. I really, really, really recommend, although I'm not going to tell you what to do, I recommend that you try not to, uh, you know, listen to the news or anything jangly. Um, you really want to kind of focus on soothing thoughts that are for yourself while you're in this place where you're making bread. Just calm and 
quiet, if it's possible. It may not always be something that you can accomplish when you're making bread, but if you plan it, if you, if you look at your daily schedule and you plan, you know, I get up at 1 a.m., I can't sleep past, generally I can't sleep past 1, um, but I, I kind of try uh, five minutes of breathing, and then I get up, and I just sort of ease myself into the process of the day. And if it's a bread baking day, then I'm, you know, I've already planned it the day ahead. I make sure I have my ingredients. The one thing I cannot stand is if it's a bread making day and I don't have yeast, um, then I know I'm going to have to make a trip to the store and that's going to kind of stall the whole process. But I like the idea of having the time in the morning to just do this and kind of ground myself. <clears throat> okay, so my dough is perfect. It's not sticking to my hands. It's not sticking to the countertop. It feels very elastic. And while I'm checking it for that elasticity, I'm not going to tear it apart. I don't want to do that. I just want to make sure that there is some give. Oh, it's actually see it's proving me wrong. It is still sticky. So I'm going to do a little bit more flour. And this acts, this can change um, with the temperature and humidity in your area. So if you live in an area where it's always humid, you know, like the South uh, United States or a country like Vietnam where, you know, it's really, really hot and really, really humid, you're going to have to add a lot more flour, which is another good reason to do it early in the morning when the dew falls you can kind of gauge your your time when you need to make your bread. But, you know, in the Midwest in the wintertime or out here in the Pacific Northwest in the wintertime, oddly, there's not much humidity in the air and it doesn't take quite the amount of flour Okay, there we go. 